The final multiple choice section on the ACT is the science test. Now, if science is not your favorite subject in school, fear not. This is not the pre-existing science knowledge test, it's the science reasoning test. The vast majority of the answers can be found in the test itself without any prior knowledge at all. The science test is really similar to the reading test, except that it has six or seven passages instead of just four. The key difference, though, is in the figures, the charts and graphs and diagrams that accompany those passages. Think about why you use a chart or a graph in a lab report that you do in science class. It's because it's so much easier to see data and results side by side than it is to see it buried in a paragraph of text. Now here's the really good news. Most of the time, you can get what you need to answer the questions just from the figures themselves. They're the most important part. And so often you don't even have to read the passage of text. The best thing that you can practice is getting good at spotting trends in graphs and charts. Are the lines going up or down on the graph? Are the numbers increasing or decreasing in a chart? And the relationships between diagrams, which variables are the same and which ones change. Now passages and now questions on the ACT science test are ones that have two things, figures that are small, clear, and have easy to spot trends, and answer choices that have a lot of numbers or the words increase or decrease. Those are going to be the most straightforward ones that you should attack right out of the gate. Now, if you had this passage, your instinct might be to jump right in and start reading this introduction. Absolutely not. The best thing you can do for yourself is just to go straight to the figure. Deal with this graph. Now, this graph is clear, small, and pretty easy to read and deduce. So, let's take note of the things we need to notice about this graph. One is... The units, we're measuring temperature in degrees Celsius versus solubility in grams of solute per 100 milliliters of water. These are the variables that the graph is dealing with. The other thing you can notice is how things are increasing or decreasing. We have an increase along the x-axis and an increase along the y-axis. And finally, we can look for trends. What is common? What's going on here with the lines on this graph? Because they're all climbing upward, we see that there is a correlation between temperature and solubility. In other words, the trend is as temperature increases, solubility increases. That means we can expect to see more of that if you extended the graph further. Now, in the rest of the videos on the science section, we're going to get more into how you can use POE to get to specific answers for specific questions. But this is the general approach you want to take for all of the questions in the science section. If science makes you nervous, focus on the fact that most of the answers are right there in the passages and the figures. Not much actual science knowledge is required. You just need to be able to work with what the test gives you. Once you've picked your passage, focus on the figures first. Spend some time getting comfortable with the variables and the units of measure and any trends that you can spot. From there, use your personal order of difficulty to do easier questions first, and use POE until you can narrow down to the best possible answer.